Well, stats matter, and you can act all teacher and try to say that they don't, but as someone who's been in top 500 for more than 27 social security numbers, they do. First of all, stats don't matter. I've already made two videos about this. Ultimately, stats are only really good at picking out when someone's doing terrible. When someone- True. Actually true. Look good. I think there's an argument that the scoreboard probably was the most toxic feature added to Overwatch 2, but it was still good. Like, it's still a good thing they added it, but it was definitely super toxic or normal, you don't really know if those are actually useful numbers. So my advice is to just ignore them completely. If you're being valuable enough and useful enough to your team, you will win games. The people that hard focus on stats are like the hard stuck gold people who are like, oh my gosh, my accuracy is just as good as the top 500 players. That's base, and then they just shoot the tank the whole time. So I'm as good as top 500, and the matchmaker is just holding me back. Like, no bro, your accuracy is the same as them because your opponents move in straight lines. Also, what do you mean by act all teacher? I am a teacher. I mean, I don't teach anymore, but I'm still a teacher. And how can you claim to be top 500 for more than 27 seasons and have a take this bad? Also, if you really- Because hot take, not every person who's top 500 or good at the game is smart. No shade, but I've seen both top 500 players, pro players, and even other creators have some takes that I just can't help but scratch my head. And even worse than that, people that are in the community that agree with that same take or think that it's good will use that as their champion of like, yes, this is why. Now, granted, it can go both ways. You could say the same thing about me. But at the same time, though, it doesn't discredit that, like, I personally think, wow, that is a really bad take. And all the people that share their bad take will use that as a way to, to uphold it. The same thing happens in the reverse. So there's no winning in the end. There is no way to win. Like it will happen with for my takes or against my takes, and the same thing would happen for someone else's. That doesn't mean we can't acknowledge that it exists. Really been in top 500 for more than 27 social security numbers, you would have at least one good clip on your profile, but there are none, and there are always none. He, he didn't have to toast him like that. Oh my God. Oh, wait, oh, wait, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is an actual, wait a minute, hang on, is it going, oh, from the, from the music, wait a minute, this is so nostalgic, what do you think it is, chat, what do you think it is, I'll let it play one more time. I play without music on, so it's gonna be a long time. I think it's Li Zhang. It could be Hanamura, actually, but we haven't played Hanamura in so long. It could be, but I think it's Li Zhang. Survey says it's Li Zhang. Still got it. Next. By the way, this is fire content. I love this. Which one's this shit? This one I feel is kind of easy. This is everyone's favorite map. If it's not your favorite map, I highly advise you to look in the mirror and say, hey. <laughs> Why am I just trying to be different? It's everyone's favorite map, King's Row. It's a hard one. Which one is this? It's everyone's second favorite map. If it's not your second favorite map, I again question you. It's Eichenwald. Yup. That map did suck for a while, but that was so many years ago now, people don't even probably know about that. Oh, actually difficult one.
What's your guesses? You need it one more time? I'll play it for you one more time. I accidentally hit the wrong button. I was tied between Dorado and Havana. I was going to play it one more time. Shit. Well, sorry. Anyways, next. This is actually kind of a hard one. This is a hard one. I think this one's new to Overwatch too. Can you guess which one it is? I believe it's Esperanza. It is Esperanza. Everyone's least favorite map. How do I know? Because I hate this map. I know exactly what this is. What map is it, chat? It sucks. It has such a banger because it's Dorado and Dorado. Wait, this is actually a difficult one. Wait a minute. I'm gonna play this back. I wanted to say Gibraltar at first, but I don't think it's Gibraltar. It makes my, something inside my soul started trembling and going, oh my God, what's that sound? I think it's Temple of Anubis 2CP. Show me Temple of Anubis 2CP. Temple of Anubis. I knew something my soul don't lie. It's got it's got too much trauma in it. It don't lie. That was good. That was that was awesome. That was a really good piece. You know, I'm gonna like that one. Three illegal movement techs that you can abuse in Overwatch. The first tech is called the wall lick. All you need to do is long strafe into a wall. This works best in the higher ranks as people mostly aim with prediction. Barely anyone strafes into a wall so it will throw people completely off. The second tech mostly only works... I'm skeptical of that one? Because I don't think I've seen someone lick a wall like that before. Uh, but the time to kill... Makes me very sus. I'll tr hey, maybe try it. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's like the Emong DC tech. Nah, that's definitely different. Works versus projectile heroes. This is where you do not strafe at all or very little. Simply stand still. You can add some jumps and crouches, but try not to strafe. Again, I, I don't think that's going to work. This is because people will try to predict where you are going. And if you aren't going anywhere, then they will miss. I don't know Lastly about that one. Is the 360. This can be great for dodging headshots, and it is also very tilting to die, too. Why do a 360 when you can just do a 90-degree turn and then look down? So you still know where you're going, and you don't have to change your keys. Because when you're when you're moving, like when you're going in a 360, you're gonna have to change your AD like movement to move with it. But if like this is like this is old Winston tech. Like if you're a Winston player jumping a widow, you don't jump with them in a straight line. You jump and then snap down so your head is covered. So I don't know about that one. This can be great for dodging headshots, and it is also very tilting to die too. I mean, look at where the widow's standing. I'm just I kind of just don't I don't know. I mean, style points, I guess. It looks cool. As cool as an Arissa doing a 360 Howdy. could look, but I guess it looks cool. 5v5 Overwatch was never supposed to happen. Let me explain. The devs said the game was super difficult to read and understand in the 6v6 format, but that's yes. still the case in 5v5. It's possible. 
you... There's a clip of goats here, which is like what I would say was like peak hard to read, other than maybe Double Shield Sim. Right now, to hop into a quick play game and get stuck between two Life Weaver ults and Kitsune that's rushes, a fair. while May blizzards that's and fair. Torb ults the point, and that's before a single tank presses a button. So the most significant effect of 5v5 really was balance. The Overwatch devs were notorious. The miss. Those are. Mm. I feel like it's slightly different though, because those are big ass ults. So it's like you understand that they're different, but like. In Goats, there was just so much glow. Like, everything was glowing, if that makes sense. Like, the shields, the Zarya's, the DM's, the rallies, the, the Lucio's. Like, everything was glowing. At least with that, it's like big structures. Like, the Kitsune Rush, you have a big structure. The tree, the big structure. So it's like, it looks a little different, you know? Like, I, I see the point, though. It's actually a really good point. Mishandling stale meta after stale meta. To yeah, let me back up a little bit. I want to hear the rest of their point presses a button. So the most significant effect of 5v5 really was balance. The Overwatch devs were yeah. notorious and mishandling stale meta after stale meta. That is very true. That's what, that was one of the biggest divides between players in, in the community, or sorry, in the, in the dev team was their mishandling of how to deal with goats. Because the dev team thought the reason goats existed was because of tanks. Um, so they giga buffed all the uh, DPS and nerfed all the tanks. But it wasn't the tanks, it was actually the supports the entire time. And they couldn't figure that out. Defined by overpowered tank synergies. Think of goats and double shields. Remo the tank synergies is what kept them alive, but the, the, the amount of healing and stuff that was going on, they, co they couldn't figure it out. Moving a tank would mean they'd never have to battle- Why does he have a chicken pi pinata? Wait, you're right, what the hell is this? I'm so intrigued a tank around every other tank again because they might multiply together and make a nightmarish meta. If you couple that with removing most of the hard CC in the game, Overwatch 2 would feel way better. But there's two things wrong with this. The first is that it wasn't just a tank problem. Look at Mercy now. She's lurking in the background anytime a hit scan, Farah or Echo get any buffs. She can multiply against any hero in the game and break them. Look at the EU top 500 right now. All pocketed DPS. The second problem is the meta issues of 6v6 wouldn't be possible That's now with the tank point. reworks Overwatch 2 has. Arissa lost her shield, roll lock is in place. If you added another tank slot to Overwatch 2 right now, goats and double shield would be impossible if they reworked Ramatra's shield too. So why is it 5v5 at all? Because they needed to put something new on the label for PvP. 5v5 was frankly a genius solution for getting rid of the dev's biggest balancing headache and making the game seem new. Pretty Pretty much for free. The best solution would have been that they got better at balancing the game, but because they couldn't, they could instead remove a tank. The problem. My only thing with this. Well, first off, we have a new balance team, by the way. It's not the same balance team for Overwatch One. It's different. Everyone's always going to disagree on balance. Like my my idea of what I think balance should be over the last year has shifted so much from like always striving for perfect balance to just just shake up the game every couple weeks. Like every every like month the game should be shooken up. Like as long as it doesn't get stale, the game is good. Like real talk. Yeah, sometimes it breaks and sometimes it, like Junker Queen, good example. Uh season three or season four uh became kind of broken at one point. I think it was end of season four. She came broken, was like really, really strong, but it was like it only lasted like three weeks, you know? So like, yeah, it was really strong, it was kind of annoying. But like you got to play Junker Queen for three weeks. We haven't really got to play Junker Queen before that, you know? So I just personally believe we're never gonna agree on balance as a community, ever. We'll never, it just isn't gonna happen. So I wonder what the answer is. The problem with this now is they've reintroduced CC. Not hard CC, weird CC. Like Cass's hinder grenade yeah, and these ramping months. freeze. These are weird effects that aren't stuns, aren't like Sombra's hack. They're a root? Soft disable? Some people can't use abilities? Yeah, yeah. Seems a bit counter to the it's hard to tell what's going on in 6v6 argument. And now there isn't a second tank to eat some of that CC up. So the new reworked tank experience sucks and that is kind of based tank is not that fun anymore as fun as it used to be sorry tank has now become much more fundamentals it's still you can still play it like i still find a lot of success playing it but uh, i don't know if that's ever gonna get solved also i'm the tank player base is the smallest player base of overwatch so uh it's the most sorry it's the least vocal because it's so small there's not that many
Uh, even looking at tank streamers, there's not there's not even that many anymore. There's, there used to be there used to be way more tank streamers in Overwatch One than there is in Overwatch Two, which is crazy. Hero cast was designed for six v six, and reworking them is seeming to be more work than just balancing six v six. They fumbled the bag on Zen nerfs, and he's a six v six hero to the core. They didn't remove their balance problems; they just shifted them to other heroes. What do I think they should do? That's a Give fair take. Six v six mode. They think open queue is worth. Giving Although this season, season six is actually been really good. I actually like the balance of season. Yeah, tank is still a little uh, something. But to be honest with you, that's just because of the counter swaps. The counter swap problem, I don't know how to fix though. I genuinely have no clue. Because it was part of the core experience of Overwatch 1. So was 6v6. Do I think they'll actually do that? No. Even though the dev team seems mostly new, I still don't see them saying they were wrong in this regard in any way. That'd probably be the final step in them admitting they don't think Overwatch 2 should have existed. And I don't th think they can do it. Mm, I don't think they believe that though, so. I don't know.